Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play King of Dragon Pass. My name is Marlo, and uh, since I uh, recorded the last video and uploaded it, I've been uh, experimenting with different things. I noticed that, that the mouse uh, pointer was not visible. That was because of the recording software that I was using. I'm using um, NVIDIA's uh, Shadow Play, which I can now use with my new computer because I have an NVIDIA graphics card in this computer that I didn't have on my uh, laptop that I used to record on. So hopefully uh, it seems in my test videos that the mouse pointer is going to be uh, visible now and also it seems that uh, the audio is a little bit better so hopefully this will work out better for this game. It's a great game and it plays just fine but boy is recording uh, a pain in the butt for this game. So. When we left off, we had gone over the uh, this screen that tells us what happened last year. It's our summary screen, and now we're going to uh, allocate uh, our clan magic for the year. So let us hit the proceed button. Okay, so let me tell you what we're seeing here. Um, that guy's old. Um, okay, so a couple of things. These faces down at the bottom. This is our clan ring. This is like a uh, ruling council, so to speak, for our clan, uh, made up of different individuals with different attributes and uh, different abilities, different opinions. They worship uh, different gods, so on and so forth. Uh, and so we'll go over all that in a little bit. Um, once we allocate our clan magic, um, which is this bit over here uh, on the right, uh, that's the first thing we're going to do is rearrange our um, our clan ring. But before we do that, we do have to allocate our clan magic. So we get a forecast. Our god talkers, uh, woo, I can't talk. Our god talkers predict a more or less normal harvest for this coming year. That's what they're talking about. And uh, so you you always get a harvest prediction, and then you get kind of a general prediction. Our general prediction is they heard Ermal laughing during the sacred time ceremonies and said that misfortune would plague us until we replaced at least half of our clan ring. All right, so, <laughs> uh, guess what, folks? These predictions, they're true. So we need to replace half of our clan ring, which we probably will, um, but um, at any rate, let's, um, oh, and we have our reputation here. Stick picker, uh, you know, you can, um, I think context will kind of tell you what that means. Uh, this is the low end of the scale. King is the high end of the scale. This is our reputation among other clans. And right now we start out kind of middle of the road. So obviously we want to make this go up and not down. Uh, we won't see this reputation meter again until uh, sacred time next year. Now our clan magic. Now our clan magic, we have seven points right now. And our points are determined and where we can allocate them are determined in part by the people who make up our clan ring and the gods that they worship also uh, gender if you have a you know roughly uh, equal numbers you get I think an extra point or two and things like that so um, now if we click on these uh, people in our clan ring they will tell us they'll give us advice uh, so here's this guy is our clan uh, leader uh, you, we can tell this because he has this, uh, you know, everybody's got a symbol in the right-hand corner of their portrait. That indicates which god they favor, uh, which we'll go over what these symbols mean in a little while. But this guy over here has an extra symbol in the bottom left. That indicates that he is the leader of the clan ring and the leader of our clan. Let's see what he has to say. Spend what we can on mysteries so we can sacrifice to understand to perform Orlan's blessings. That's good advice. A lot two to crop magic. Our herds are also important, so earmark one for them. Leave some magic available in case we need to call on the earth goddesses. By the way, with an Eralda worshiper on the ring, we could perform more livestock rituals. Right, so what he's telling us is, is that if we had a Eralda worshiper on the clan ring, we would be able to allocate more than one point uh, to herds. See, right now we can only allocate one. Um, and some of these we can allocate to, and there are times when you can even allocate three, but we don't have the right people, uh, or right combinations of people to do that. But that's how that works. 
Um, <laughs> we might as well spend it all since we'll have the same amount next year. That's not terribly good advice, because uh, we might not. Spend all we can on mysteries that we can sacrifice for understanding of the important blessings. Uh, mysteries is very important. Um, the women of our clan can't learn the magic they need to help defend us. A lot, some of our magic to mysteries to help us uh, sacrifice for Venga's favor. Uh, she basically is advocating for uh, points to be put into stuff that has to do with the god that she likes herself. Um, it's easier keeping people healthy than trying to cure them later. I think we should allocate two to health magic and conserve a few points in case we need to call on Chana Ar uh, Chalana Arroy during the year. Chalana Arroy is the goddess of uh, healing, basically. A lot too to crop magic. Our herds are also important, so earmark. Uh, yeah, he's, she's saying basically the exact same thing as this guy. So, great. Alright, so we are going to put two into crops because we need that. We're going to put one into herds. We're going to put one into trade. One into mysteries. One into war. And we're going to leave one in reserve. Now, I personally think that it's always important to leave a um, at least one point in reserve uh, because things can come up, random events can come up during the year where you might actually need a point of clan magic or two and if you don't have one, bad things could happen. I'm gonna... Oh, okay, well, uh, yeah, I'm gonna give the game a quick save. Uh, just in case. And... Uh, Let's uh, go back. Okay, so now we've allocated our clan magic. We're ready to proceed, and we're gonna have to do this every year uh, at the at the beginning or end of each year. So let's proceed. Now, the first thing that we're going to do, and I think you should do this every game, uh, is reorganize your clan rate because the game doesn't always do that good a job of giving you the best people for the jobs. Now. Up at the top, we have different categories. Animals, bargaining, combat, customs. Custom doesn't mean design your own. Custom means like customs, as in traditions, that kind of custom. Um, like it is customary in North America to shake someone's hand with your right hand. That kind of custom. Uh, leadership, you can also think of custom as laws. Um, leadership... Um, magic and plants so leadership oh gosh um, well okay all right so I like to start with leadership and let's I tell you what let's get rid of everybody um, just gonna put him in every slot that just clears them out. Um, so, okay, so right now he's still the leader, but I, I don't think we're gonna leave him the leader because if I, I can't move the cursor over here, but if I, so and I'm gonna mouse over this guy, and if you look in the upper right hand corner, you can see that this guy is 60 years old, which means he could basically drop dead at any point. Um, now, he does have excellent leadership, and it's a real shame that that is the case. Um, we really want kind of a younger leader, because we want our leader to survive and grow, and by the time we get ready to form our tribe, hopefully be elected king. Now, we do really want a, uh, a worshiper of Orlant. If you look right below his age, you can see that this guy worships Orlant, and if you look at his character portrait, he's got a little spiral, a little clockwise spiral. That is the symbol for the god Orlant. And since he is our main god, we really need to have our leader be following that uh, god. Now, as you can see, we have this guy, we have this guy who's the same age, and we have this guy who looks like he's He's good at leadership. He's not as good as these other guys, um, but he's he's good at it. And he's only 28, so I think we're going to take him. Now, he, you can get the, um, you know, the characters can get better at their skills, and they will uh, if certain things happen. So we're going to make him the clan leader because, you know, we're going to have to be a little bit ageist. Uh, and then, okay, let's, let's look at animals. Now, uh, the... She, oh my gosh, she's great. She's really good in a lot of categories. Uh, 
we're gonna have her on the clan ring regardless, I think. Um, she's 33. She looks like Roseanne. Uh, she's 33. She's really good at animals. She's good at bargaining. Very good at combat. Very good at customs. Excellent leadership. Very good magic. Very good plants. She's hired. All right, bargaining. Uh, we got this old lady here who's renowned at bargaining. Uh, and she worships Isaris, uh, which is why Isaris is the talking god, the god of business and trade and negotiation. So we're going to do that. Combat. Uh, this is basically going to be our war leader. Um, and uh, let's see, she's excellent at combat. She's excellent at combat. Leadership. Okay, I think we're going to keep the red-headed lady as our combat person. She worships Vigna, which is kind of a woman goddess of, of war and uh, things like that. Uh, why am I taking her, even though she's... And Oh, and let me tell you this. I don't think I said this. The order that they're listed means this is the, um, like, this is the best person at combat. She's second best. He's third best. Even though it may say excellent for combat for her and excellent for combat for her. Well, how do you know which one's better? It's, it starts top to bottom, left to right is the order in which they are good at this. Why am I going to take the second best when I could have the best? Well, the main reason is, is because, uh... Elgane here also has uh, leadership uh, at very good, and she doesn't have it listed at all, which means she does have leadership ability, but it's it's low enough that it's just not, you know, it's basically not making the list because it's too low. So leadership is important in combat, so we're going to take her. Uh, we could take him. He worships, worships Humacht, which is the god of death and uh, war. And uh, that's not a bad thing to have for a war leader, but she's younger and better at it and has yeah, and better leadership and better combat. So uh, that's who we're going to go with. Customs. This is basically um, this person you can think of as being our, uh, our attorney, our lawyer. This is the person uh, who will hopefully advise us in matters of uh, the law that you know, operates between clans and within clans, has largely to do in this uh, game world with tradition, with how things have been done in the past and for years and years and years, and so that's where we're going to continue to go with, uh, is how, basically how they make legal decisions. Uh, and so, uh, Lank or Mai, uh, you'll notice the first two guys have this Y um, on them. That is uh, because they worship Lank or Mai, and he's kind of the god of you know, he's kind of the lawyer god, in a way. So, uh, we have two guys here who are uh, apparently very good at it, uh, but, um... Orlev is better. He's 30 years old, he has excellent custom, very good leadership, so he's gonna make the cut there. Um, alright, leadership, we already did that one, and, oh gosh, I, I hate picking, like, the last guy on the list, but the only other two Orlanth worshippers are old as dirt. Um, no, my apologies to anybody uh, who is 55 or older in real life who happens to be watching this video. But in this game, uh, a lot of times these characters don't live long after they reach 60. They uh, tend to, to die of things uh, after that happens. So, okay, magic. Um, Alright, we could have... Uh, wow, she's very good. She's excellent. And she worships Chelana Arroy, which is the healing goddess. You also do get a bonus in your clan magic every year for having a variety of gods uh, represented on your clan ring. If you have the same one over and over and over again, you, you, you suffer for that. So, we're going to take her and plants. Um, she's excellent. She's very good, and we already have her on there. Um, plants good. Uh, 
Oh, gosh, but she's... Okay. Okay. So, she also worships Shalana Arroy. And we just had somebody on here who worships Shalana Arroy. So, I, I don't think we want to have another one... Uh, another person who worships Shalana Arroy on there. Let's... We want some, some more variety. So, now, uh, we could go with Kalai. He's the, um... He's the second best at plants. He's excellent. And he is, um... He's young, which is good. Uh, young is good, because hopefully they stay around for a long time, uh, and they can develop their skills and get better at them. Um, so when they're young and they're already starting off at a good you know, level um, with a particular skill, there's a you know good chance you can get that skill developed even further and even, even better. So he's a good choice. Barntar is the god of like farming, basically. Uh, crops and farming. Um, so he would be a good choice. Now, I'm kind of torn, though, because in third place is Angori. Now, he worships Ermal. Ermal is the trickster god. Ermal, um... Yeah, Ermal is kind of like Loki in Norse mythology. Uh, and it can be very useful to have a trickster on your clan ring. Uh, he's, he can cause you some trouble, but he's, he can also be kind of a Swiss army knife. He can be just the thing you need at the right time. So I tell you, for the sake of the let's play and having an, a, a more inter, interesting and entertaining game, I think that even though Kalai might be the better choice on paper, I'm going to go with Angori here as kind of the X factor. Um, and we will take him instead. And if anything happens to him, we can, or we don't like what's going on, we can always reorganize and get Kalai on here later on. He's still going to be in the clan. He's just not going to be in the clan ring at the moment. So, okay. So once you're done, you hit reorganize. Now, if you wanted to change from war to balanced or peace, you know, from whatever you chose, you could do that on this screen here. But we're not going to do that. We're going to stay balanced. We're going to reorganize, and this, by the way, should fulfill our, uh, you know, remember our prediction was that we needed to replace half the clan ring or bad things were going to happen to us. Well, I think we can check that box. So, reorganize. Now, this is a turn-based game, so nothing is going to happen until we do things. So let us uh, kind of take a walk through the screens here uh, so that you can kind of see what's going on. All right, so we have our clan ring represented at the bottom. They'll always be down here. And you can click on them at any time, and if they have advice for you, they'll tell you. Uh, he doesn't have anything to add right now. Both the farmers and weapon thanes are satisfied. That's pretty rare, actually. Our crafters are already producing about as many goods as we can trade away. If we had more trading partners, we could support more crafters. This lady knows what she's talking about. Uh, trading is a great thing in this game. I like to do it. Uh, it really helps in a lot of ways. All right, I don't have anything to add, so on and so forth. So nothing's really happened is why they don't have a lot to say right now. Um, so, okay, this is kind of the main screen of the game, although we won't spend that much time on this screen in particular. Um, so on the left, uh, we have our clan name, Clan Heron, Heron, Heron. I have no idea how to say our own clan name. And we have our population breakdown. We have 408 farmers. Uh, five of them are sick right now. Uh, we have uh, 302 children. Uh, children are a double-edged sword. Obviously, we want children. But children don't work. Children don't uh, produce anything. So if you have too many children, uh, you can get in this like ugly downward spiral uh, you know, where you don't have enough... Uh, people actually producing food and goods and things of that nature uh, to support your population. That's bad. Weapon Thanes. Weapon Thanes are basically professional military. We have 10. Uh, that doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, our total population is only 771. Um, so, yeah, so we have 10. Uh, we have 28 nobles. Um, those. That's the pool from which we pulled our clan ring. Uh, we have 10 crafters, have 8 hunters, 
and zero thralls. Thralls are slaves. This number will never change because we will never have slaves because our ancestors did not have slaves. Um, okay, so we already we talked about the reorganize button. The clan move mood is currently reserved. The farmer steel resolved, and the weapon thane steel resolved. I think it's pretty much like this every time you start. Uh, I think that's pretty much how it works. Uh, we can hold a feast, we can give people gifts, we're not going to do either of those things right now. Now, over here we see the year, it's now 1330, the year 1329 ended when we allocated our clan magic, and so now, and it says sea, as in the ocean. What does that mean? Well, that is the season. Um, sea season, there are basically five seasons in the Orlanthi year. Sea season, which is like spring. Uh, fire season, which is like summer. Uh, harvest, I think, is what they call it. Uh, which is exactly... Or earth season? Yeah, earth season, which is the harvest season. And dark season, which is uh, like the dead of winter. And then there is actually a fifth season, which is uh, storm season, which uh, seems to me to be kind of like... Uh, like early spring, if you live in North America, early spring can it can be very very stormy, uh, sometimes even dangerously so in in, in the United States, for example. Uh, a lot of places experience a lot of thunderstorms, uh, even tornadoes in the early spring, um, and then it tends to calm down in the later spring. Uh, and so sea season is kind of the later spring, and storm season I think is kind of the late winter, early spring. And then bet but between storm and sea season is uh, the, um, you know, this two-week period that we just had where we allocated our clan magic, uh, where it's basically like, you know, a two-week holiday for everybody. Um, so, sacred time. So that's what that means right now. So every time you start a new game, you're going to start in sea season. So sea season is when planting of crops happens. And of course, you can see some artwork here. You can see a couple houses and some people doing some uh, gardening. And oh yeah, we're a balanced clan. Uh, the artwork in this game, I think, is really cool. It's it's all uh, has a very hand drawn uh, quality to it. Uh, it's great. So, all right. So uh, that's everything on this screen. Now we have a kind of an arc up here, and uh, we're going to kind of walk through what. Um, what all this is. So we're on the clan screen right now. This is kind of our main screen, but you can click on these little icons, these little carvings in stone, and you can do different things. Like we can go to farming. Uh, let's make that go away. We can go to the farming screen and we can see uh, where our uh, resources are allocated. We have 766 cattle, 1,510 sheep, 50 horses, and 1,507 uh, pigs. We could slaughter uh, some pigs, but uh, or sheep, but there's no need to do that. That's what you do when you're running out of food and you're going to starve to death. Uh, we have land, we have crop land, pasture land, which is for uh, our livestock, and we have wild lands, which is basically undeveloped land, forest, river, mountain, whatever it is. Now we have our percentages of crops planted, wheat. Uh, at 35% barley, at 50% rye, 15%. I don't mess with these very much right here. You can. You can adjust the ratios here. We might do that later uh, to eliminate some wildlands. Uh, wildlands have some pros and cons that we'll get into later if that comes up. Um, and then our expected food uh, based on our different food sources, hunting, harvesting crops, and our herds, and our current food stockpile of 375. So, yeah, that's what goes on on this screen, and we can adjust these things. Now, uh, you might ask, well, you know, it's a turn-based game. How do you make something happen? Certain actions that you take on some of these screens would actually cause a turn to pass. And each season, each of the five seasons that I went through, basically consists of two turns. Now, random events can pop up almost any time. Um, but uh, they don't really count towards a turn passing, so you don't have to worry about that. So I could actually make adjustments to this right now, and I'm tempted to do it, but it makes a turn pass. This would be an action that would make a turn pass, uh, you know, one of our two C season turns, and I'm not 
ready to do that yet. So uh, we can see our clan relations. Um, so we can see, um, yeah, and, and depending on what screen uh, you go uh, to, you can click on uh, people and they will give you some advice about the topic of that screen. So all the advice that they're going to give us right here is going to be about uh, our relationships with other clans. So, um, right, so now here's how you, the best way to use the screen is uh, these buttons right here. So we have uh, alliances with the Turtle Clan, and we're here in the white. That's our location. Uh, purple, uh, blue indicates alliances. Purple indicates uh, neutral. Uh, as it gets towards pink and red, those are clans that don't like us very much. Red are people we're in feuds with. We're in feuds with the Anzar uh, Anzarni and the Lonisi. Uh, Anzarni are far away from us, which is good. Uh, but the Lanisi are pretty close to us, which is not as good. Um, so they, um, we're basically feuding, which is as close as Orlanthi clans get uh, to being at war with each other. We're basically at war with these clans, but that's, you know, kind of a loose concept. Don't think of it like, you know, various countries were at war with each other in World War II. It's not quite like that. Um, so, okay, favors we owe. We owe favors to uh, four different clans, and which means that they can come to us at any time and request cattle or goods or for us to do something for them, and we uh, don't have to do it, but we are honor-bound to do it. Uh, bad things could happen if we don't do it, um, but there are certain restrictions. They can't just ask us for anything. Uh, their custom and tradition dictates that certain restrictions and limitations apply. But they can uh, cash in on those favors almost any time they want to. Now, there are five clans that owe us a favor. So we could go to them at any point and say, hey, you know that favor you owe us? Cashing in. Time to pay up. Uh, so that's nice that uh, we have you know, some favors due to us. Uh, known clans, that's just everybody that we know of. Our tribe, we're not in a tribe, all tribes. And there is one tribe that already exists at the start of every game. That is the Kalamar tribe, and uh, that is because these clans, uh, the lore uh, of this is, is the, the clans included in this tribe arrived in Dragon Pass earlier than most of the other clans. We're one, we're one of the latecomers. We're one of the most recent clans uh, to arrive. Um, so, yeah, so they're, um, they're in a clan. We don't have to worry about them very much. They're kind of far away from us. And um, I've not ever played a game where, as a tribe, they kind of ganged up on me or anything like that. Um, that's probably more relevant. They're probably more relevant in the long game, I would say, than the short game. So, all right, the trading screen, it looks very, very similar um, to the screen we were just on. But if you look at the map over here on the right, you'll see two black lines. Those indicate our trading partners. One is the Terraling clan, which is to the south of us. And one is, is to the uh, Zathornin clan, which is to our west. So we uh, we only have two trade routes right now. We can probably have more. Um, right. Uh, we have an annual market. As we grow our um, ability to trade, the market will become more frequent, which is good. Um, and uh, we have... And we can, this is where we would launch a trade mission from, which we probably will do, actually, very soon. Um, and then we have one treasure, which is Blacktail the Bull, and he is a really fine bull who sires more cats than normal. You always start out with Blacktail the Bull to give you just a little bit of a boost, um, you know, to your cattle, uh, you know, your herd production. So, yeah, we could uh, start up a mission here, but, um, yeah, we're not going to do that right now. We'll do that in a little bit. Um, that is probably going to be the first thing that we're going to do. Uh, there's a war screen for raids. Um, we, um, let's see, we have 177 footmen. Now, footmen are basically, uh, they're like militia. They are the farmers and um, uh, herdsmen who take up arms when called upon. And we have weapon thanes who are our professional military. 
we also have uh, patrols that we can uh, go. We have inner and outer patrols, and uh, they um, they patrol. Uh, inner patrols are close in to the settlement. Outer patrols are around the borders of the Tula, uh, which is our area of land, if you'll recall. And uh, these patrols are useful because they will help us spot um, approaching enemies or raids or anything like that. Now, um, why did I say enemies or raids? Because even clans that you're allied with will raid you for cattle from time to time. In this culture, uh, that is appropriate and expected. There are very few casualties in a cattle raid, and you'll see that we have two buttons here, one for, one for cattle raid and one for a raid. A cattle raid is just what it sounds like. You're trying to steal their cows. And sometimes people will come and try to steal our cows. And we might be allied with each other, but that's just what they do in this culture. And the idea is, is that if you're not powerful enough to hold on to your own cows, you don't deserve them. And everybody kind of feels that way. So... Yeah, cattle raids, which we will do from time to time, and then there are, is raiding, and like I say, normal and expected, even between allies. And then there's actual raiding. Uh, that That's raiding is basically uh, war. That is an attack on another clan. So we wouldn't do this with our allies, but we might do it on the clans that we're feuding against. But um, now, I'll say this. During sea season, you do not want to go on a cattle raid, or a regular raid, because... You need your people at home uh, farming, uh, planting your crops. Otherwise, you won't grow as much food for the winter. And the game actually does keep track of that. Now, what's nice is that the AI has to play by the same rules. So, odds are you're pretty safe during uh, sea season. There's a very good chance you're not going to be raided by anybody because the AI is planting their crops too. Now, uh, these... You might not be able to see this, but grayed out are, is the word raids, raided by, and fortified. Um, these things are grayed out because nothing has happened yet. But this will give us a history of things that have happened once uh, warlike activities begin. And we will be engaging in certain warlike, warlike activities. Now we can, we have one fortification right now, is, which is a ditch. Uh, and we can build others, and we probably will. Um, it, if you click on them, it tells you what the cost is in goods. 40 goods uh, for stake perimeter, 50 goods uh, for ramparts, wooden stockade, 75 goods. Stone wall is very expensive at 150 goods. But the first thing that we're going to build is a watchtower. And I'm going to go ahead and build it. So we click on it and click on fortify. Okay. Now, the first random event has occurred. And this is a big part of the game. So, um, and this is not a great one. <laughs> But that's just how it goes. Um, so let me walk you through how this works. Uh, Oral Gandhi, the wilf willful child of well-liked Carls, has a history. Remember, Carls are, uh, you know, the guys who like our ranchers, basically. Well-liked Carls has a history of making trouble, but now he has done the unthinkable. He has desecrated your or Orlok temple, throwing uh, cow dung all over the holy shrines. When asked why he would do such a thing, he only shrugs. His parents are beside themselves with shame and anger. The god talkers conduct the usual rites to restore the balance of the temple. Uh, but we have to do something. Uh, we have five choices in this instance. One, we could conduct an additional powerful temple purification ritual. Two, we could outlaw him and see to it that he is killed. Now you might be thinking, that's really harsh, he's just a kid. It is harsh, uh, but uh, we have to remember that these are not modern times. Um, this is a very different world. These people live in very harsh conditions, and uh, you know, like I said, if we apply 21st century, uh, 21st century uh, standards of justice and morality to this game, we will lose. Uh, we could just outlaw him and not worry about having him killed. We could send for shamans to see if the boy is possessed. Or we could basically say, let his kinfolk deal with it. In other words, do nothing. Now, how do we know what we should pick? Well, that's where the clan ring comes in handy. If we, We're going to click on each of these people, and they're going to offer us some advice. It may not be useful advice, um, 
and each character may not have advice in all circumstances, but they're going to offer us advice. So let's see what they say. Uh, okay, our clan leader says there can be no forgiveness for such a shocking act. Um, and basically, when you click on that person, a choice or two or three will be uh, highlighted, which is basically the choice that they are advocating, uh, or choices that they're advocating. So let's see what Roseanne says. Uh, this has made the people very unhappy. Only the banishment of the spirits that afflicts the boy will cheer them up. So she is for uh, trying to see if the boy is in fact possessed. Uh, the traitor. Uh, shamans will know. Just don't offend them by trying to bargain with them. Uh, our military leader. Uh, she says purify the temple. Uh, our customs uh, and traditions leader. Our uh, lawyer. Let's see what he has to say. Okay, desecrating a temple is not an awful crime, but he has not yet been initiated and is not responsible for his actions. That is true. Uh, until children reach a certain age, they are not considered to be responsible for their actions. Our clan leader should know that, but he's an idiot. Um, because we decided to go with youth over experience. But our uh, lawyer is basically telling us that this child is not legally responsible for the things that he has done. He's advocating that we let their, his parents deal with it. Uh, okay. Uh, although it will be very hard, we must certainly uh, we must be certain to purify the temple. We should sacrifice at least 15 cows as we do so. So that's yeah. When you when you do things with the gods, you generally have to sacrifice either cows or goods or both um, to the gods. So she's advocating a uh, temple purification ritual and sacrificing 15 cows. Let's see what the trickster says. Uh, this has made people very unhappy. Only the death is this poor bull who will satisfy them. Okay. Well, we're not going to kill him. Our lawyer tells us that he's not responsible for his actions. We're going to do the conduct a powerful ritual. And we are going to sacrifice um, 15 cattle just like our uh, priestess of Chertalana Arroy suggested. Now, I'll tell you this, just because that's what they suggested, it doesn't mean it will work. Sometimes you can do exactly what everybody tells you, and it doesn't work. Sometimes you can make the exact right choice, and it just doesn't work. There is an element of luck and randomness in this game. And so, you know, that's not necessarily a problem, but it's just something that you need to know going in. Otherwise, you could be very confused and frustrated. Also, a little thing, if you want to see the entire scene, the art uh, here, just hit the space bar on your keyboard and the text box will go away and you can see the entire thing. There's not much to see in this one, but in others uh, that won't be there'll be more going on. And like I say, the art in this game is beautiful and uh, I I think it's worth uh, enjoying. So okay, 15 cattle, let's do the ritual. Uh, okay, the god talkers said that the temple had been properly purified. And look, well now we're down to zero magic and we lost a few cows. But that used up our magic point. It's a good thing we had it. If we didn't have the magic point, uh, we would have been in trouble right there. So, all right, so that uh, is over with, and now we're in fire season. So, uh, you know, I think maybe the random events do take a turn. Now, fire season is a great time for raiding. Um, but let's go over some of these other screens. Um... All right, this is the uh, basically the, the screen that has to do with the gods. This is where we would uh, sacrifice to the gods, uh, construct uh, temples, um, choose which blessings we'd like to have, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so we will be doing that. Now, you can also explore, and we're going to do that uh, right now, actually. We're going to explore our own Tula, and we're going to send her out, and we're going to send three weapon thanes and ten footmen in case they run into any trouble, which can happen, and we're going to explore slowly, which uh, affects uh, your odds of finding something. The more time you take to look, the more likely you are to find something, and we're going to send them on their exploration. Okay, we've got another random event. Alright, as your people explore your Tula, you find many unusual features. 
One of these is a cave. The cave is inhabited by large armored rodents with huge mouths filled with teeth, each as sharp as a needle. The creatures swarm out of the cave and attack the Carls, who found the cave, injuring several of them. People are worried that these creatures will cause more harm. So, we have five choices. We can block the entrance. We can have Angori lure them away with trickster, trickster magic. We can find outsiders to exterminate the creatures. We can order our weapon things to exterminate the creatures. And we can shrug and go about our business. I don't think I have to tell you, number five is a bad idea. Let's see what our clan ring has to say. During the Storm Age, Orlanth the King was never bedeviled by petty problems such as this. Okay, uh, these things are called Rubble Runners. They multiply like mad and are very dangerous. The only way to get rid of them is to kill each and every one. So she's saying to exterminate them either with our people or somebody else's. Why risk getting bitten ourselves when we can find someone else to do it for us? So she's advocating we hire people. The weapon thanes say this is a matter for the Carls to deal with. They are not rat catchers. Then she's advocating blocking the uh, entrance. <clears throat> they won't be easily dealt with. And like you know, this is a perfect example. Yes, that is true, but it's not terribly helpful. Um, the advice is not helpful all the time. Uh, only trickster magic can end this infestation. And want me to charm them right into the cooking pit? So these both are uh, advocating trickster magic, and I'm going to choose that because this is a perfect example of when a trickster comes in handy. If we didn't have this worshiper of Ermal on the clan ring, uh, we, we wouldn't be able to make this choice. So we're going to have him lure them away. He pranced about the cave mouth singing a song which he said was an irresistibly salacious tune in the language of the killer rodents. It seemed absurd, but the rodents formed a line and followed Angori as he danced away from the borders of Artula and toward those of the Boscovi clan. And, and that's one of the clans we're feuding with. So we basically we've sent these horrible rodents over to them. Um, okay. Now, and then we have myths. And uh, this screen uh, is going to be important later. These are very; these myths are basically about how we. Um, it's basically the history of the gods and our people, uh, the Orlanthi people, not just our clan, but all clans. And these symbols beside them indicate what we know of them. If there's no symbol, we don't know much. And you can click on this, and you can see that most of this is blank. Uh, we really don't know much about this particular uh, story. Oops, that's the options screen. Didn't mean to do that. Alright, let's get back out of here. But then, like, if we click on one of these others, uh, we know more. Uh, we still don't know much, but we know more. So, there are different ways that you can learn more of the secrets of these stories. And it's important to know these stories because... When you do hero questing, which we will talk about later, and which you must do to win the game, uh, you need to know some of these details. So, uh, that's important, but we'll have to do it kind of later. Uh, also, is a culture screen. A lot of the stuff I've been telling you about how the game world works and the culture comes from information that you can learn here. Um, it, uh, it gives you a lot of good background information. Um, so this, for example, gives you the outline of the seasons. Sea season, fire season, earth season, dark season, and storm season, and sacred time. And we won't read all of that, but it's, it's there. And you can look up all these things, which is really, really cool uh, that they do that. So, and then um, this last one is the uh, history of our clan. And there's just not much because we don't have, uh, we haven't done much. Um... But it tells you the decisions that you've made in your, um, you know, your random events and other things that you've done will be recorded there. We won't really be looking at that much. Now, we could go on a cattle raid, and we do need to, uh, we're going to have to end the episode here. It's going on quite a bit, but again, we needed to explain some of the uh user interface here and how things work, but uh, I think we're going to go on a cattle raid and we'll end the, the video on that note. Uh, so you just hit the cattle, and again it's fire season, so the crops have been planted and now they're growing. And you can see the art up here has changed by the way if you look, but uh, 
<clears throat> so fire season's a good season to raid. Earth season, not so much. You need your people at home to harvest the crops. But fire season's a good season to raid. So we're going to go on a cattle raid, and we're going to um, take our people's advice. Now, this is our military leader. If we send too many warriors, they will be spotted and have to fight. The turtles are the weakest of the nearby clans. That's true. <clears throat> that is true. Uh, you don't want to send your whole army on a cattle raid. Now, you might want to send more people on a regular raid, but you don't want to send your whole army on a cattle raid. You're Actually, what you're trying to do is sneak in there, steal some cows, and bring them back home, and hopefully nobody know who did it. I mean, that's really what you're doing. <clears throat> so she's right. We don't want to send very many, and we won't. Um, a stake perimeter would be helpful. Yes, it would, and we will build one soon. If we send too many warriors, they will be spotted and have to fight. Uh, the Jinstali are the weakest in the nearby clans. <clears throat> Let's not forget, uh, we have a feud with the uh, Lonisi. This would be a good time to raid them. Uh, we already talked to her. A stake perimeter would be helpful. Yes, we can spare the farmers for a raid. That's right, because it's fire season. We don't have enough warriors to defend ourselves. However, the spirits of our weapon things are high. That's right, we do need more weapon things, and we are going to get some more. But we're going to raid the the ones that we're actually a feuding with, and we're going to send four weapon thanes and ten footmen, and we're going to go on a cattle raid, and we should see the results pretty much instantly. Uh oh, we were spotted. All right, so this is combat. Um, we're going to plunder, uh, which means we're going to try to steal things, and we're going to. Uh, Evade. We didn't send a lot of people, um, so we don't want to uh, engage in too much combat. So let's see what happens. Um, okay, we didn't. Uh, okay, we we lost. We pulled back before the Lanisi were ready, and by the time their charge had reached us, they were tired, but not tired enough. The battle didn't last long. Our magic blew away theirs, but they were able to rally. We were driven off and had no opportunity to obtain booty. So our cattle raid did not work. Um, okay, well, uh, we've got another random event, but we're going to end the video here, and uh, so uh, when we come back, we'll continue on with the random events and hopefully have more success cattle raiding. We're going to build up our uh, fortifications, we're going to sacrifice to some gods and learn some new blessings and rituals, and generally try to lead our clan to victory. So until then, I hope you're doing well, I hope you continue to do well, and I'll see you in the next one.